Hi, we're out on the ranch today, so bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Bird shot in your home defense shotgun. Well, before I even go there, let me say two things. First, a while ago I did a couple of video presentations entitled Introduction to Shotguns and Shotguns Don't Suck for Home Defense. So today, in the interest of brevity and to avoid redundancy, I'm going to give some really brief explanations of a couple of things. And if you'd like a more in-depth explanation, you can watch either of those videos. Secondly, the idea of choosing a shotgun as your home defense gun is in itself debatable. That's why you see things like videos called Shotguns Suck, and why I made a video entitled Shotguns Don't Suck for Home Defense. So for today, we're going to approach this from the standpoint that a shotgun is what you're going with. So that having been said, let's get to it. The question, is birdshot a viable option with which to load your home defense shotgun? Well, to answer that question requires that we ask a few other questions. The first one being, what is birdshot? Well, let me show you. Now this is buckshot and that's just a few big pellets as opposed to birdshot which is lots of little pellets. This is number four birdshot and this is number eight which you can see is a lot smaller. The bigger the number, the smaller the projectile. So now that we know what birdshot is, the next question is why? Why would you select birdshot in your home defense shotgun? Buckshot is made to shoot large game, like deer, that's why it's called buckshot. Birdshot is made to shoot small game, squirrels, rabbits, and birds. So why would you put birdshot in your home defense shotgun? There's actually quite a few reasons, but the primary reason is because you believe that it will penetrate less through common building materials like sheetrock, plywood, household appliances, whatever. And therefore, with less tendency for overpenetration, it has less potential danger to innocent bystanders. Well, that brings us to our two big questions that we really have to answer. One, is that true? Does birdshot penetrate less than buckshot through common building materials? And two, will birdshot give you the desired effect on the intended target? Well, I've got some birdshot. Let's shoot it and see if we can shed any light on that. If you've seen our shotguns don't suck for home defense video, you've seen this setup before. We have three walls set up six feet apart. We have to condense the distances a little bit to fit it all on the range. We've got a two by four frame with half inch sheetrock on each side. Another two by four frame with half inch sheetrock on each side. There are no studs in here. Most houses have studs set up on 16 inch center. And if you shoot through that wall, you got about a 1 in 10 chance of hitting a 2x4 stud. So we've just removed that extraneous variable. Oh, and these are just to keep the whole thing from falling over. Our exterior wall is sheetrock on the inside, half inch. And then on the outside, half inch plywood and then some cheap particle board siding. And then down here we've got our innocent bystanders. Now again, if you've seen our shotguns don't suck for home defense video, you know that big buckshot like double lot will go through this. Smaller buckshot, like number three or number four, won't, but it's only stopped by the exterior wall. It'll go through the sheetrock side of the exterior wall. So let's go back and shoot this with some birdshot and see how that compares. So we're loaded with 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and one eighth ounce of number eight birdshot. And I'm going to shoot from the prone so later I can shoot from the kneeling and not shoot through the same holes. So you see that that birdshot goes through our first interior wall, but not through our second interior wall. So it penetrates a lot less than buckshot does. However, one and one eighth ounce of number eight birdshot is a fairly light 12 gauge load. Let's try a heavier 12 gauge load and see if we get any different results. Well, you can see when we go to the bigger bird shot, it easily went through both interior walls. But this sheetrock, the interior of our exterior wall, it had just about no energy left when it got here. You can see a lot of holes here, but none of these actually go through the sheetrock. Some of them are stuck kind of halfway in. You can feel the lump of the pellet. And a lot of them just hit and bounced out. There's quite a few pellets laying right here. So although this did a lot more than the number eight bird shot, it still pales in comparison to the penetration of buckshot. And just to illustrate that, I'll reload with double lot buck and shoot through this wall and see what happens. Oh. 
And there you have it. The big buckshot like double lot goes through. As you saw in the other video, the smaller buckshots like number three and number four don't. And as you make the transition to bird shot, it goes through even less. And when you get to the really small bird shot like number eight, it goes through even less. So our first question, does bird shot reduce the potential for overpenetration and therefore reduce the danger to innocent bystanders? And the answer is absolutely yes, it does. But our second question, will bird shot, especially that smaller bird shot, deliver the desired effect on the intended target? That's a little harder to illustrate, but we'll give it a try. So at typical home defense distances, can bird shot get the desired effect against the intended target? Well, we've got our favorite target, soda jugs, and I'm back to the one and one eighth ounce of number eight shot. Let's shoot these and see what happens. Well, we proved that that was fun, but let's try something else that might be a little more definitive. So what is a good way to test whether or not at close range, birdshot can give you the desired effect on the intended target? Well, we can shoot soda bottles and water jugs and ballistic gel, and they tell us what they tell us. But probably the only real definitive test would be if you got a large animal like a deer and then somehow got it to smoke meth and then took it out and shot it with a shotgun. Well, I'm not going to do that. But let's see what I can do. I've got a ratty old hoodie sweatshirt, some duct tape, a couple of hearts, I got them from the butcher shop, not the coroner. Some pork steaks. Some pork ribs. <laughs> some frankfurters. Now, in case you didn't know this, the skin of, of most hot dogs is made of an intestine. And the contents of most hot dogs probably does pretty well simulate the contents of your intestines. Yeah. And some margarine. This will simulate that fat layer we all claim we don't have. So let me see if I can put all this stuff together into a target that will tell us something. So to start with, what I've built here is I've got a pork steak, which will simulate a pectoral muscle, and behind that pork ribs, and behind that a heart. Now it's a beef heart, but I think we'll be okay. And then we'll cover that with our hoodie. And I know that's not four layers of denim, but it is three layers of hoodie. And of course we all know that hoodlums wear hoodies. No, that's not where the term hoodlum or hoodie came from. Anyway, we'll also take one of these repair centers, find the center of our target, put that there in about the center, so I know the right spot to shoot, and we'll go back five yards and shoot it with a shotgun. Now we shot those soda jugs with 12 gauge, one and one eighth ounce of number eight shot. To shoot this meat target, I'm gonna use the stand gun. It's a single shot Ivor Johnson, 28 gauge. And this particular load has three-quarter ounce of number nine shot. You can get more powerful ammunition than this, but the reason I'm going to use this for this particular target is because this combination of gun and ammunition happens to be the least powerful shotgun I own. So how'd we do? Well, we peeled off all our duct tape, unwrapped our heart, and our first layer, our steak, is just pulverized. The ribs they stopped most of the pellets, some got through, and our heart has about eight or ten pellets in it. So is that an effective hit? You be the judge. But remember, that's about the lowest powered shotgun I could get. So let me make up another one of these, and we'll go back and shoot that again with a more powerful shotgun. So with the 28 gauge, that was marginal. Now let's go back to the 12 gauge. We've got the exact same steak, ribs, heart target set up under here. And with a 12 gauge, we're going back to the 1 and 1 8 ounce of number 8 shot, which, although more powerful than the 28, is still, as 12 gauge ammo goes, a pretty light load. Well, before we go dissect our heart, I wanted to show you this. A lot of the pellets went clear through the heart and into the sheetrock wall. Now, none of them came out the other side, so still, your wall stopped it. But quite a few of the pellets achieved full penetration. Now let's go dissect our heart and see how that looks. Well, we've got this all torn apart, and of course, our steak is pulverized. The ribs didn't stop very many pellets at all, and our heart is riddled with shot pellets and pellet holes. Again, 
that 12 gauge round, although more powerful than the 28, is really not all that powerful as 12 gauge rounds go. But even with a mediocre round, you can see pretty good effect with the bird shot. So let me generate one more of these targets and we'll shoot a really powerful 12 gauge bird shot round. Well, I'm out of ribs, so we're going to have to make our next shot a gut shot. So I got our boxes of margarine, actually two thicknesses of them, and then some pork steaks to simulate an abdominal muscle wall, and then our intestines. So let's hang this up, and we'll shoot it with a more powerful 12 gauge load. So we got our gut shot target set up, and I had to fold the sleeve of the hoodie across here to get our layers back. Now what I'm going to shoot it with is Federal 12 gauge 3 inch Magnum two ounces of number six lead birdshot. That is not the most powerful 12 gauge birdshot load you can get, but it's getting pretty close. And we'll shoot from five yards. And there's the results. Pulverized our target, blew a big hole in our wall. Now, some of the pellets did go to the next wall, but all they did was hit and bounce off. After going through our target in this wall, they had virtually no power left. So what does all this tell us? Well, does birdshot, as opposed to buckshot, reduce the potential for overpenetration, therefore reduce the potential for danger to innocent bystanders? Yes. But is birdshot going to give you the desired effect on the intended target? If you use a fairly powerful birdshot load, yes. So the bottom line question, is birdshot a viable option in your home defense shotgun? And I would say again, if you use a fairly powerful birdshot load, absolutely yes it is. So as always, don't try this at home, I'm what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the birdshot versus buckshot video.